MMA Fight Corner. This is Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner speaking with TJ Dillashaw, who's fighting Mike Easton this Wednesday, January 15th at UFC Fight Night 35. That's Rockhold versus Philippou, live from Atlanta on Fox Sports 1. TJ, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing really good. Great, great. So you're ranked here right up in the top 10 of the UFC, and a win over Easton would obviously keep projecting you forward right in the bantamweight division. How ready are you to get out there and just put a stamp on your on your W? How how important is that to you right now? Uh, really, really important. You know, um, that's pretty much just the, the whole the whole goal is to uh, not only win but to do it in uh, a dominant fashion, like you said, to put a stamp on to prove to everyone that I'm uh, where I belong and to keep to keep growing in the sport. Now, you are coming off of a loss. It snapped a four-fight win streak. You had that outing with Rafael Sonsao. It got fight of the night. It was a real pressure cooker, but it you know it ended up being a loss for you that was uh, probably difficult to take. Uh, do you feel a real sense of urgency to get right back out there and prove uh, what a top contender you are in this division? Absolutely. I mean, that was a tough one to take because... Uh, like you said, I was on a four-fight win streak, and the fact that I feel like I won the fight, um, so I, I got to um, come out and, and prove that that I was the better fighter, not only by just uh, doing it really well against Easton, and, and hopefully maybe getting that shot back at him. You know, every time uh, you know you said the loss was rough for you. Every time a fighter goes through that, you know it's a roller coaster for you guys. It's either you're at the top and you're winning with the four-fight win streak, or you know you have a loss and it, it feels like a setback. Um, what did you really learn, and what are you able to reflect from that loss? Yeah, I mean, I, you have to take positives from every situation in life, and uh, with this insult, you know, I had to, I had to take from it things that I could have done even, and even better to make my the fight more dominant in my favor. Um, you know, it showed some things I, I needed to work on that me and Dwayne sat down and, and kind of picked apart. Um, it would have been it would have been difficult if I would have finished that choke first round for me to uh, see those things, and so maybe it was a blessing in disguise that I got to uh, see it before I even get my my shot at being the best and uh, just become better at the sport I'm doing. Was there anything specific that uh, you and Dwayne worked on? I mean, there, there's quite a bit of stuff, you know. I mean, just staying dominant in the positions I'm always dominant in, and uh, you know, not always going for the kill, being a little bit patient and, and touching my way. Just, just there's a bunch, there's a lot of things. I mean, you can analyze every fight, even when you win, but more so when you lose. And there's a lot of things to work on. As far as Team Alpha Male goes, I mean, you guys sped into 2013, just steamrolling through the competition. You know, there were a few losses there for some of the guys at the end. Um, you know, but you're the guy that gets to kick off the year for the team. It's 2014. It's a fresh slate. How uh, important does it feel for you to start the momentum right for the team? Oh, you know, I didn't really think too much about about starting the momentum for the team. It's, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely an individual sport, but it's more so a team now for us, but uh, I'm, I'm more worried about just uh, solidifying my career and going out there. I mean, we're, all the guys on our team are going to do great no matter what happens. I mean, we have uh, a very star-studded uh, lineup on our team, and um, you know, I just need to go out and have fun. I don't need to put any pressure on myself of starting off, um, you know, starting off on a good, a good step. Just go out there and act like I'm sparring with the best in the world, like I do every day in practice. You were supposed to actually get that chance to fight Mike Easton at UFC Fox 5. You're getting the chance now. Uh, you had to pull out of that fight at Fox 5. Instead, he faced Rafael Asuncao, if I'm not mistaken. Um, did you ask for this fight specifically, uh, being that you two were ranked right neck and neck with each other in division? Or was it you know the UFC that just rebooked it? How did the uh, booking come about for Mike Easton? It just it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, we were both ready to fight, and we're right next to each other. We've you know fought in the same opponents, and yeah, like you said, I was supposed to fight him a year ago, and unfortunately for him, he gets to fight a better TJ Dillashaw a year later. So the timing for you really works out then, right? Oh, absolutely. And what do you think about his speed? Um, you know, they call him the Hulk. He's pretty well-rounded. He's got the wrestling. He's got the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's got a lot of speed. Uh, what do you see? What are you able to dissect so far from this fight as you approach it? Just, you know, coming in a couple days away here. 
Oh yeah, you know he's a very well-rounded fighter. I mean, like if he's in the top ten, most if not all the fighters have to be well-rounded. Um, you know, he's just kind of a. I feel like he's kind of the same fighter every time. Comes out does the same things. Um, I just got to make sure to stick to my game plan and, uh, like I said, just have fun. I mean, I feel like I'm the. You know, we're both very well-rounded, but it comes down to being who's the better athlete, and I feel like that's me. And I just got to uh, go out there and have some fun and relax. And you were talking a little bit about your team and Team Alpha Male and how everybody's kind of rising in the team. Well, in a couple of weeks, Uriah is going to have a title, a shot at the title against an Emberau. It's a rematch. How psyched are you guys over there for him uh, for that title shot? Uh, super psyched. I mean, I think it actually works out better for him that he gets to take this fight on a short short notice. He uh, He's always ready to fight. He's always in shape. And uh, we got the best Uriah Faber uh, fighting Hinton Brow right now. I mean, you guys saw how good he looked against uh, McDonald, and he just kind of stayed ready, helped me. He got right back in the gym to help me get ready for my fight after his fight, and you know, it's going to pay off for himself. Pay off for himself. I know that Uriah's already spoken about it, and you know, as you said, as you climbed the division, you know, there's obviously no way that the two of you would fight each other. But what happens if there were to be the case that Uriah held the belt? Do you guys talk about that kind of thing, or do you have to wait until, like, after you know the fight and see what happens from there? I mean, for the most part, we'll wait till that 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 comes. You know, I mean, we're just here to to dominate the division and um, show how great our team is. Fantastic, TJ. Well, we want to wish you all the best of luck. Uh, let's see, Fox Sports 1 will air the main card, the preliminary card for UFC Fight Night Rockhold vs. Philippu. The preliminary card begins airing at 2 p.m. Pacific. The main card at 4 p.m. Pacific. That's where you can catch TJ Dillashaw against Mike Easton. And the early prelim- preliminary card will begin on UFC Fight Pass. TJ, thank you so much for your time today. Oh, no problem. Thank you.